Uh, Steve Reed from the Associated Press Coach. Um, hey, I want to get started by just asking you about the, the, the challenge that you faced. Um, obviously, you got a young defense. You're playing in a division with, you know, maybe three potential, uh, you know, Hall of Fame quarterbacks. And, um, and, and you're doing this in an era where, you know, you aren't able to meet with your guys. Can you talk about the challenges that you're facing and, and how you're trying to deal with all that? Yeah, you know, um, you know, there's really no excuses in this game, and nobody wants to hear them, and, and we don't give them. So, you know, uh, it would have been a better situation if we'd have been on the field the last two and a half months, right? Obviously, with his new staff, but it is what it is, and I think we've uh, we've gotten a lot of work done over the last two and a half to three months with them, and um, you know, the Microsoft team stuff, and we've been with them. Uh, you know, on the internet a couple hours a day with the vets and the, and the rooks have been even a little longer. And so we've gotten a lot of stuff done. That, you know, obviously, I, you know, I haven't seen these guys move in person, you know, and you'd really like to see each guy move in person so you, you know what they can and can't do. And, and, and I think that's really what we would have gotten over the last two and a half months, along with learning the system um, from an execution standpoint. Because normally when you teach something – you, you, you're on the chalkboard uh, or a PowerPoint. Then you go to a walkthrough. Uh, then you go actually do it in the drill work, um, in the seven-on-seven, seven, nine on whatever you're doing. And so the, the field part of it, we haven't had. We have had the, the meetings, and we do kind of a walkthrough on the video with formations. But still, it's not the same. So, But we've done the best job we can, and we've really worked hard at it. And I, I'm not sure any team in the national football has outworked us. So um, I'm, I'm proud of that. The players have worked hard, so it's been good. Okay, it's David Young with ESPN.com. Following up on that, I mean, your staff um, is, is rather young as far as NFL experience. Um, I think as far as you, a first-year defense coordinator in the NFL, Matt Rule, first head coach in the NFL, and same thing for um, your offensive coordinator, Joe Brady. How does how has that impacted and, and that lack of experience in those positions in this league? You know, so if, if you go back, you know, I was in the league for four years in Detroit. Uh, Joe was in the league two years. So it's not like we haven't had NFL experience. Um, I've coordinated at every level now. This will be uh, in high school, junior college, 1AA, 1A, and the highest 1A programs play for national title. I've been in some big games. Then I've been in the National Football League. I've coached against Brady and Breeze and all, all the guys. So, um, so um, we've – and Joe has done the same thing. Joe was with, you know, uh, uh, New Orleans. And, and so, obviously – um, you know, any time that you, you enter a new level, I haven't been in the National Football League since, what is it, 2008 or nine. So there are things that have changed. But, um, you know, football is football. When you run ISO, I don't care if you're at a high school in Texas, uh, at Baylor or the National Football League. If you're in an over front, we have to all fit it the same way. We all have the same problems. Uh, I think, you know, there are some executional things in the National Football League that are done at a high level. I think the offensive line coaches in the National Football League are really good. And I also think the quarterback plays really good. So, you know, those are things that are a little bit different uh, that you have to get used to. Um, but, um, you know, I've, I've been a part of all that. So, um, you know, I'm not going to say that there won't be an adjustment because there will be because I haven't been in the league since eight or nine. But um, I'm looking forward to it. Coach, uh you guys have done a lot of uh, brought in a lot of safeties over the course of the off season. Um, Trey Boston, Justin Burris, Jeremy Chin, Kenny Robinson. H how do you plan on using all those guys? Is it do they have different skill sets, or do you plan on rotating them? What what's kind of the plan with the safeties? You know, you know, we don't really try to. You know, when we talk about defensive backs, we tell them they're DBs. They can play anywhere. Those are the type of guys we're interested in. I'll give you an example, Burris has also played nickel in the National Football League. So he has a lot of value. He can play back back in the back row and play nickel. Jeremy Chin, I think there were three guys in the draft like Jeremy, Jeremy being one of the three. There are going to be multiple things that we can do with him. It's like I, we have Brian Burns. 
Um, he is a, a kind of a unique guy. He's long, he's, he can move, and you can do different things with him. So I think it's really important that we find players that can do more than one thing. Um, now, there are players that are really good that can only play one position, but the more guys that are multiple that can play different roles, I think the better we – you know, because we don't have to substitute. Um, we might be in personnel, a personnel group that we can play two or three different packages, which creates a lot of problems offensively. So um, I, I like some of the pieces that we have. Now, we got to get them on the field and we got to get going with the package, you know, um, as far as running it on the field. But, uh, yeah, we have taken some safeties, but some of them can play different roles. And um, that, that's what we're interested in. With, with Burris, who's played like deep field, center field safety and, and sort of some nickel and some outside corner, is there also some expectation that he'll play in the box as a run defender or is, or is he much more of that kind of coverage focus guy for you? You know, uh, the game has changed. The safeties have to play in the box today. Uh, that's just the way it is. Uh, you know, we've got to disguise. If, if we show them an eight-man front with no disguise, you know, they, they have things that they're going to take advantage of. So we have to be in looks where they don't think – we're going to be in an eight-man front, and one of the safeties will be part of the eight-man front. Uh, so, yeah, all our safeties will be part of the eight-man front. You know, everybody likes Trey Boston in the post, and he's really good in the post. But if you look at his history, he's also pretty good in the box. Um, if you look at all the games that he's played. So, yeah, I, I, I think today uh, in most defenses, the safeties have to be involved with the box, and we'll do that. So, um, and I think uh, Burroughs can do that. I think all the safeties that Kenny Robinson, I think all the guys that we, we brought in can do that. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Coach, when you're listing a lot of the defensive backs, a lot of those guys are really young. I mean, outside of Trey, you know, not a ton of experience. What's kind of the challenge with having so many defensive backs with so little experience this season? No, it, uh, anytime, guys, th there's no substitute for experience. And, and players that have been – because the way we all learn is we get our butts kicked, right? I, and your business, our business, that's how you learn. And so they're going to go through some growing pains. But I think we hired the best guy to, to, to coach him in Jason Simmons. If you look at Jason's history, he's taken a lot of good young players and made them really successful. So I'm really excited. Um, uh, Evan Cooper that came over from Baylor, and we got Cedric Whitaker. I think those three will do a great job. Um, the other guy that we hired is Al Holcomb. Al will be involved in different positions, and Al's really a good football coach. I know you guys know Al. So um, I think we have the right people coaching young people um, in this system. So, But, yeah, they're going to go through growing pains. That's, that's just part of the game. Um, the thing that we try to do with those guys is don't give up big plays. If you give up something, it's got to be underneath you. And so uh, if we can do that with those young guys and let them grow, then I think we'll be in pretty good shape. Well, could you assess the corner position? I know you've added there both in the draft and with Eli Apple. How, how would you just assess both sides at corner? Okay. You know, if, if and I'm going to do this with our whole defense, is if you put up our, our defense and our corners, if you look at how fast they are and their size, I mean, they, they, they have talent. Um, so it is our job as coaches – to get them to play at a level that we want them to play. I mean, that's our job as coaches. We can use excuses and do all that stuff, but that's not what Coach Rule's about. Uh, when we get a player, we need to develop the player. Um, and we've picked these players for the most part. So we picked Eli Apple, okay? And you look at his size and speed, we, we expect him to play good. Jason Simmons wanted him. So um, I'm anxious to see where Jason takes him. Um, so, but, but I think we have some uh, ability there now, how well they're going to play and stuff we have, it remains to be seen, but it is our job, uh, to get them to play at a level that we need. And so, um, that's how I look at everything that the players are a reflection of us and we will continue to teach that way. The Next. one corner, the one corner you did not pick you inherited was Dante Jackson. You're, what, what have you seen? I, I know you haven't been around him in person, but your assessment on Dante. Okay, Dante has something. First of all, Dante's really tough for his size. He's physical, which I love. In today's football, everybody's getting in the tight formations to run the football and make the corners tackle. He can do that. So I'm excited about that. 
you look at how well he runs. He has catch-up speed. The problem is, is he needs to get a little bit more detailed. And we've, wor- and we've talked to him about that, and I think he – with our DB coaches, they have really uh, – they're working well with him. And I think he's got some, re- some talent to him. And so I'm excited to watch him grow with the people that are going to coach him. You mentioned Jason Simmons a couple of times now. Uh, you coached him also back at Arizona State. What do you remember about him as a player? And how do you see him uh, – how do you see how he has developed as a coach now that you are working with him? Well, Jason played for me, and uh, he started as a true freshman at 169 pounds, and he ended up leaving at 193. And we actually went 11 and 0 and played for the national title and lost in the last 20 seconds to Ohio State uh, his junior year. Um, but Jason was always physical and tough and smart, um, and he is the exact same guy as a coach. Um, he, there, there's no BS in his room. Everything is straightforward. I think the players love him because um, there's nothing, nothing goes by. If something needs to be said in the room, it's said. Um, and so they see how tough he is. Uh, he's really a hard worker and really, I, I'm not, I wouldn't be so, I would have been even more impressed working with Jason than I was before he came on board. Uh, he is a hell of a secondary coach. He should be a defensive coordinator. And that's really his goal, and he should be. Uh, he is, he's really sharp. Um, the years in Green Bay, I think he was there nine years. And um, uh, that, I mean, the preparation and details that, that he's gotten in those nine years is pretty impressive. Coach uh, Scott Fowler from the Charlotte Observer, thank you for doing this. Mm-hmm. I have uh, two for you. Uh, one is, is fairly simple. I'll just start with this. But – do you uh, anticipate coaching from the press box or on the field, and what leads you to where that decision wherever you go? You know, guys, I love being on the field. Um, I get a better feel for the game on the field, and I get a great view of the players eye to eye. You know, um, when they come off the field, I can talk to them, and and I, and and you know, a, a, a football game. When you study and go into a game, you think you know what's going to happen, but you have to be ready for things that, that, that you didn't quite think would happen. That uh, You may think, hey, they can't run the ball against us, and all of a sudden they're running the football. Or something's not going away. And I can really feel that on the field and see it in the player's eyes. So it helps me call the game. All right? And I also, if you watch me, I will be about 35 yards away away from I won't be even with the ball and I'll be away and I can see um so um you know I get a lot of the same things from the box as far as visually but I'm on the field with the guys and I can really get a feel for the game and how they're reacting to what's going on in the game so I've I've done most of the coordinating well all the coordinating I've done has been from uh the field the other one thank you and the other one is just I know you have not seen him in person, but given what you've seen on film, I just wonder who you're, who you think might be some future stars that you have on that defense, because you're certainly going to need some to replace the Luke Keekleys and others of the world. And if you're going to get where you want to be, you're going to have to have some pro bowlers. I wonder where you think those might come from. Well, I mean, if you do things by the draft, okay, your first rounder's got to play. And we have some first-rounders on defense. You know, if I look through it, Burns is a first-rounder, right? Um, We have Derek Brown. Um, We have uh, – Dante was a first-rounder, was he not? First or second. I mean, we have – Shaq was a first-rounder. We have guys that – Jeremy Chin is a second-round. The guys that have been drafted and we're paying, we got to get them to play. Um, And now – there are also some – Trey Boston's will play really solid for you and could make a Pro Bowl in the middle. Uh, so you have some uh, – I think Justin Burris is just just coming into his own. So we have some guys. Um, Weatherly, I think he can become an elite pass rusher at this level. So we have some pieces, in my opinion. Now we have to develop them and how long that takes to come together and play the type of defense that it takes. Um, remains to be seen we've got you know we'll see and you know I don't have predictions on that 
I've coached some groups that take a little longer, some that come right away. So, uh, and, and that's the, one of the things that we've missed over the last three months is some of that, you know, being on the field with them. But, uh, yeah, I'm excited about uh, the group. We have some guys that can run. Um, so I'm excited about that. With the um, defensive tackle rotation in the four-man front, how important is having sort of pairs of guys on the field with sort of complementary skill sets, or is it just a matter of getting fresh bodies no matter who fits together? Yeah. Here's what I've always thought in, 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 in Coach Rule, and we've talked about constantly. You know, um, they, we talk about what, um, what are some things you have to do to win? Well, you can't give up big plays on defense. you got to create turnovers. You can't turn the ball over on offense. Uh, you've got to get explosive, explosive plays on offense. But, guys, the number one, and ladies, the number one thing you got to do is keep your team healthy. That is the biggest thing between winning and losing at any level, especially in the National Football League. So uh, why, why am I bringing that up? If a guy is playing over 1,000 reps, 1,200 reps, how long, how many seasons can he continue to do that? And so what we've always felt is that if you are doing the things that it takes to, win, to do winning football, then why aren't you playing? So we've always played more people than everybody else that we've played. And, it, it, and so as the season goes, we are actually a better team late in the year all right, because we have kept guys fresher and more people have played. The other advantage it gives you when more people play, when a player goes down, it's not a big deal. Now, it is a big deal. Injuries are always – but the next guy is plugged in because he's probably played some, and you feel real comfortable. So the rotation up front is really important. You have to rotate. You can't have these big guys that weigh 3 to 330 in there every snap. You're going to wear them down, especially over the course uh, of, of a 16-game schedule. So – the rotation will be big in there. Well, with the whole group, um, uh, it'll be interesting to see how many people we can rely on to play. That'll, that, uh, I'm really going to be interested to see how many we can. Coach, uh, one player you haven't mentioned is Day One Short. Uh, what are your expectations of him coming off his injury? And I'd also like to follow up and ask you, uh, this definitely is an unusual time. What is the one thing unusual that, from this time kind of behind the scenes that you'll take from this experience? Well, I, I've got big hope for KK. I think he is, um, he's got quickness. He, he understands the game. He can rush the passer for a big man. I think it's really important how we use him and Derek inside and, and their roles. I think uh, they'll create a lot of problems for people inside. Um, I think the thing that this has done for us um, this time has made us better teachers because, of, you know, with the internet, you know, coaches, uh, you know, we get stuck in habits, right? And, and we have came up with more ways to teach people over this last three months than we ever have. And I think it's going to help us down the road and continuing to uh, teach people um, all the, the things that we can send them. Um, with the internet, and so we've we've added all these internet um, uh, uh, programs that help teach, and I think it's been really valuable, and in, uh, I think it's going to be really a good tool down the road. So that's the biggest thing I think we've uh, learned over the last three months as coaches. Can you follow uh, what one of those tools? What maybe specifically stood out about those that helped, and kind of just kind of give me an example of what you're talking about. Well, what we can do is. And, and we haven't done a lot of this, right? I mean, we have to an extent, but like we have programs that we can send a complete lesson with. So it, it teaches something, and now we, we, we actually generate it. It teaches it, then it asks a question, and then it goes on to the next subject. And, and then at the end of it, there's a quiz. So the guys can, you know, the way you learn is through assessment. If you never take tests and are never assessed, how do you get better at something? You never know how good you are, right? Well, through these assessments and the, the, these learning tools, practices, meetings, they can now really assess what they know. And, and, and really, that's the scary thing about coaching. It, my biggest fear is what I, what I don't know that they don't know, right? I want to know what they know. 
if I know what they know, then, then I, because coaches, a lot of times we do too much in a game and there's mistakes made because of coaches where we have too much in. And that's my job is to, to, that we execute what we run at a high level. And the only reason way I'm going to know that is make sure that I know what they know. And the only way to do that is through assessment, which is testing. So, um, yeah, the, the, um, there's some excellent tools out there. Bill, you've been with Coach Rule, um, I believe, in his first years at both Temple and Baylor, and obviously now here. What has kind of been the common denominator, the landmarks you all have looked for in those first seasons that have clearly paid dividends down the road, especially in season three at both stops? Yeah, you know, uh, the first years have not been good. So, um, you know, I, you know, uh, we, you know what we've done is we've gone in and we've had to change culture. And, you know, that's not hard. That's not easy to do. Uh, and I'll give you an example. We went to Baylor, and Art Bryles is one of the best football coaches probably on the planet. But he does things different than we did. And he won a million games. Well, now we go in and try to change that culture, right? And they're looking at us like we didn't have to do all this stuff. And we won a lot of games. So there's a transition. How big a transition we have we don't know yet. I think we would know better if we were been with them in person over the last three months. We would know better that transition and how it was going. So um, that's one of the things that, that, that is, I don't know how long it's going to take. The other thing that we've done is teach our packages. Now in pro football, guys, a lot of these guys have run. We all run similar stuff. Very, very few things are that much different. So, but it's how you do them. Um, are you going to play with effort? Are you going to be detailed? Are you going to know the offense uh, and what you're playing? Are, you know, th and that's process. Are you going to take care of your body? Because if you don't, it'll break down over a 16-game six schedule. Again, it's process. So we spend a lot of time teaching process. And then once it kicks in and they now take it over and lead it, then we've had good success. So um, how those things – and how fast they all come, uh, it remains to be seen. Coach, I was kind of wondering what your assessment of the linebacker position is and the depth that you have there. Yeah, you know, um, we, Tyre Whitehead we brought in, and he'll end up playing the mic. But, you know, we have a lot of possibilities at linebacker. Um, that's the beauty of a Jeremy Chin. Could he go out and play the field backer? You know, he's 220 pounds, 25 pounds, can run. He can do a lot of different things. Uh, can Shaq play the will, uh, the mic backer in nickel? Um, so we have some, so, some uh, flexibility with our linebackers that I'm excited about. Now, some of the younger guys I have not seen run around yet, and they haven't played much on tape. So I don't know yet. Their numbers are good coming out of college. They're decent enough to play linebacker at this level. We just don't know enough about them yet. Bill, what have you done during quarantine in terms of moving? And, you know, are you, I'm assuming you're in Charlotte now. How long have you been here? You know, um, you know what's crazy, guys? I've been here like five months, and I haven't met 97% of our team in person. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, this will be my 44th year coaching, and I, 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 there's nothing like it. I mean, people ask me about it, and I said, this is, uh, you know, we haven't been through this. Coaches haven't. Um, I still, I'm going to buy a house here. Still haven't found, I've been so, in, you know, in, into this job that I haven't really had the time to look at, at what I want. So, um, you know, over the, the next six months, my wife will be here, here shortly and, and we'll get going with all that. But, uh, yeah, um, I think I'm going to really enjoy Charlotte. It's a great town. So I, I'm really looking forward to living around here. Um, Coach, just uh, back on the defensive line for a second, have you asked any of the guys, because obviously there are some there are guys left over from last season when there was a different scheme, a three-man front. I know you'll be doing a little bit of a multiple up front, but guys like Marquise Haynes, Christian Miller, Brian Burns, have you asked them to put on some weight, maybe get bigger? Yeah, you know, okay, this is what I learned a long time ago. And, and, and the old boys used to tell me, big guys beat up little guys. That's why there's weight classifications in boxing or wrestling, right? So obviously we want to try to get people at a size, you know, keep, 
um, developing, like Burns has some room to develop, right? You know, Haynes is thicker now. Um, you know, he's going to be probably around 240 pounds is what he's going to play out. But who knows? Burns could be, you know, who knows what he could be, right? Um, so some of the guys, you know, we've got to put um, uh, uh, Etor. I don't know how big he's going to be, guys, because he's so young and he's 270. I don't know how big he's going to be, but we will try to get him as big but not lose the mobility. And a lot of it goes, you know, with, with percent body fat and all those things play into it. And our, uh, our strength people and our wellness people, I think, are as good or better than anybody in football. So they'll do a great job of developing these uh, and, and getting people at the right weights. Could you talk a little bit about Zach Kerr in particular and what he offers in terms of skill set and where he fits in terms of sort of one tech versus three tech and all that? Yeah, you know, he's a big body, right? He's hard to move in there, right? So, um, you know, in, in some of the defenses, they have to play a three and a one. So he'll play both. Uh, but he's a big body. He's played in the league. So he'll be hard to move. You know, um, you know, you look at last year's team and they played the pass pretty well. It's the run game. So we have got to get back to playing the run game. And, and because you stop the run does not mean you're going to play great defense. But it gives you a foundation that if you're able to play the run and stop it when you need to, you have a chance to play pretty good defense. And so we got to get back to that. And he's a big body inside and looking forward to seeing him move in there. Is there any advantages uh, that most of the NFL really doesn't know exactly what to expect from you or to Brady and the rest of the staff? Oh, yeah, there's no question. We, you know, we have a couple packages that will be new on defense, right? Um, so, you know, but, um, you know, any time that you're new – um, and people haven't coached against you. Now, the flip side of that, I haven't been in the league either for a while, so I haven't coached against them. But we tried to hire, if you look at our defensive staff, I love our defensive staff. We've hired a veteran defensive coach at each position. Um, you know, Mike Fair has been in the league a long time. Jason Simmons, Al Holcomb. And so they've been around most of the people we're going to play and have good insight. So, uh, and um uh, and, and I'm the type of guy that I want guys to challenge me on the staff. I want guys to help me do my job. Um, we all have a role, and, um, and I'm looking forward to working with all of them. With uh, Yita, F.A. Obada, and Weatherly, you've got three edge players who also played a fair amount of three-tech, sort of recently especially. Is that something that you consciously went out and looked for in free agency in the draft, or is that just how those, those things have happened to end up? No, we, we've kind of looked for, you know, like some of the, you know, we have guys that F.A. can move inside and be, go inside and rush, right? So can Weatherly go inside and rush. He did it in Minnesota. So, and I talked about earlier about different players having flexibility. We have some D linemen that can go inside on third down and rush and rush from the edge. And not a lot of guys can do that. We have two or three that are, have the flexibility to do that. So uh, it gives us a chance to play different packages with them on the field because of their flexibility. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how all this comes together uh, when we get them on the field. Coach, what's the challenge of facing Joe Brady's system? Well, it, it, it's a lot of fun because that's going to be New Orleans, right? So, we, <laughs> you know, a um, lot of similarities in, uh, but you know, uh, you know, we always say iron sharpens iron, right? So practice should be a lot of fun. I think um, going against that offense and they've got to go against us. And I think uh, uh, the players will make each, each other better along with the coaches. Phil, you guys, uh, Matt had told us you guys were going to practice against the Ravens in, in a perfect world. Obviously, that's not going to happen. Do you think, and, and I know the CBA limits you somewhat, but Will there be more live hitting uh, in, as you kind of gradually work up to it? How do you – I guess what I'm asking, how do you balance coming off this long layoff the the physical reps uh, that you need without doing too much too soon? Yeah, that's the biggest challenge is that if you do too much too soon, you're going to get all the soft tissue issues and a lot of bad things will happen. So that's why, we guys, we have a great wellness staff. 
that that really communicates with 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 coach rule and so we will i i i have complete confidence that they will take care of the players and there's a plan coach rule doesn't do anything without a plan now and we understand that if we lose players early that's going to kill us down the road because they're not practicing especially after not practicing the last three months uh we can't have that so we'll have a good plan uh i know there's a plan in in uh in line already, um, but uh, it'll be well executed and, and, and uh, we'll keep everybody healthy.